Why is Muhammad's cult the only belief system in the world that sanctifies the slaughter of anyone who apostatizes? Let me start with the definition of apostasy. The dictionary of Quranic terms and concepts defines apostasy Arabic ertidad, leaving, departing away from, or deserting one's religion. Further, traditional Islamic law prescribes the penalty of death for a Muhammadan who commits apostasy. Although it can be argued that the punishment is not explicitly stated in the Quran, however, there are a number of Quranic verses that pertain to apostasy and various Muhammadan scholars found in them the justification to execute apostates. Nonetheless, it is most certainly based upon hadith. Please be aware that hadith is the theological bedrock for the death sentence. There are numerous hadiths that unambiguously state that apostates should be killed. I shall examine a few. Al-Nisa 4.89 Take not friends from their ranks until they flee in the way of Allah. But if they turn renegades, seize them and slay them wherever you find them. This is the most authoritative verse in the Quran regarding those who leave Muhammad and Islam. They must be slain. Bukhari volume 9.17 narrated by Abdullah. Allah's Messenger said, The blood of a Muslim who confesses that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and that I am his messenger cannot be shed except in three cases. In Qisas, equality in punishment for murder, a married person who commits illegal sexual intercourse and the one who reverts from Islam, apostate and leaves the Muslims. Bukhari, volume 9.57, narrated by Ikrima. Some atheists were brought to Ali and he burned them. The news of this event reached Ibn Abbas who said, If I had been in his place, I would not have burned them, as Allah Messenger forbade it, saying, Do not punish anybody with Allah's punishment, fire. I would have killed them according to the statement of Allah's Messenger. Whoever changed his Islamic religion, then kill him. Bukhari, volume 9.58, narrated by Abu Bruda. Abu Musa said, Behold, there was a fettered man beside Abu Musa. Mu'ad asked, Who is this man? Abu Musa said, He was a Jew and became a Muslim, and then he reverted back to Judaism. Then Abu Musa requested Mu'ad to sit down. Mu'ad said, I will not sit down till he has been killed. This is the judgment of Allah and his messenger, and repeated it thrice. Then Abu Musa ordered that the man be killed, and he was killed. Abu Musa added, Then we discussed the night prayers. Muwatta of Imam Malik, chapter 1410. Zayd bin Aslam reported that the apostle declared that the man who leaves the fold of Islam should be slain. Volume 17 of Tabari's History, pages 187 to 88. Details the murder of other apostates among them were many Christians who had accepted Islam, but then dissension had developed in Islam, had said, By God, our religion, deen, from which we have departed, is better and more correct than that which these people follow. Their religion does not stop them from shedding blood, terrifying the roads, and seizing properties, and they return to their former religion. Ali's representative al Khirrit met them and said to them, Woe unto you! Do you know the precept, hukum, of Ali regarding any Christian who accepts Islam and then reverts to Christianity? By Allah, he will not hear anything they say. He will not consider any excuse. He will not accept any repentance, and he will not summon them to it. His precept regarding them is immediate cutting of the head when he gets hold of them. I was in the army that Ali bin Abi Talib sent against the Christians of Banu Najiyah. We came to them and found them split into three groups. Our commander said to one of these groups, What are you? And they replied, We are a Christian people who do not consider any religion to be better than ours, and we hold fast to it. Our commander said to them, Be off with you. He said to the other band, What are you? And they said, We were Christians, but we accepted Islam, and we hold fast to our Islam. He said to them, Be off with you. Then he said to the third group, What are you? And they said, We are people who were Christians. We accepted Islam, but we do not think that any religion is better than our previous one. He said to them, Accept Islam, but they refused. He said to his men, 
When I rub my head three times, attack them and kill the fighting men and make captive the women and children. The dependents were brought to Ali, page 191. There was an old man among them, a Christian called Al-Rumahis bin Mansur, who said, By God, the only error I have made since attaining reason was abandoning my religion, the religion of truth, for your, the religion of wickedness. No, by God, I shall not leave my religion and I shall not accept yours so long as I live. Ma'qil brought him forward and cut off his head. Page 192. Ma'qil wrote a letter to Ali, the Khalifa. For anyone who had apostatized, we offered return to Islam or else death. As for the Christians, we made them captive and led them off so that they might be a warning for those of the protected people who come after them not to refuse the jizya and not to make bold against our religion and community. For the protected people are of little account and lowly in status. Al-Imran 3.85 if anyone desires a religion other than Islam, submission to Allah, never will it be accepted of him. And in the hereafter, he will be in the ranks of those who have lost all spiritual good. Al-Saf 61.9 It is he who has sent his apostle with guidance and the religion of truth, that he may proclaim it over all religion, even though the pagans may detest it. To mislead most people who are actually ignorant of the Qur'an, especially regarding the abrogated and abrogating verses. Muhammadans will always recite verses which are conciliatory, such as Al-Baqarah 2.256 There is no compulsion in religion. Right has become distinct from wrong. For two years after Muhammad's death, Abu Bakr, the first Khalifa, waged a war of extermination against thousands of Arabs who decided to leave the yoke of Muhammadan Islam and the tyranny of his companions in Medina. I would like to address the followers of Muhammad who are listening to this chapter. Why, if Muhammadan Islam is such a noble belief system, does it resort to terror to keep its followers in line? Why, if Muhammadan Islam is a religion of peace, would it deprive its followers from their most fundamental of human freedoms, that of the freedom of conscience? Why, if Muhammadan Islam is superior to all other beliefs, do Muhammadan leaders need to keep their people under its fold, at pain of death and in perpetual terror and fear? Why should the allegedly fastest growing belief system in the world care or fear the change of mind of a few of its followers? Why not let go of them so that only true believers remain? Why is Muhammadan Islam the only belief system that forces people to believe even when they do not want to? Where is the moral intellectual or theological justification for such an unwarranted draconian rule. It is obvious that such measures befit those systems that are essentially built entirely upon falsehood, deception and lies, because this is the only way their leaders can hope to slow down the inevitable march to defeat and oblivion. It would be more advantageous for a religion of truth if people are free to examine ideas and then choose the religion or ideology or system they want. Although a person cannot be compelled to enter Muhammadan Islam, but a person who becomes a Muhammadan is subject to Sharia law, and this law requires death for leaving the cult of Muhammad. Many Muhammadans living in Islamic countries have no problem with the rule of putting apostates to death and actually participate in the gala atmosphere of such events. On the other hand, Muhammadans living in the West are embarrassed by this death sentence. The West values the freedoms of thought and speech. Muhammadan Islam does not. And these virtues have never blossomed under its rule. Consequently, when asked about the Islamic law for apostates, many Western Muhammadans do their best to cover up Islam's edict. Motivated by conviction or shame, they make up various defenses and say whatever they can to put our mind at ease and make Islam more acceptable to a naive, gullible, and ignorant Western audience. It is not difficult to make the Qur'an dance and say what one wants it to say if one's audience is ignorant of the facts.